Square Jack, loud and clear. And so the routine continues, as another supersonic T-38 is flown for its first time. In the California sky, high above Northrop's Palmdale facility, a civilian test pilot is performing the company's final inspection, completing the manufacturing phase of this little bird's life, which, since its very inception, has been a long succession of inspections, tests, more inspections, and more tests. Simultaneously, the next chapter, Acceptance by the United States Air Force is already underway as an Air Force pilot in the other seat checks the aircraft's performance, components, and systems for perfection of operation. Any radar, Nasha Palmdale, 190 over Point Alpha, going tower frequency. Roger, 190. 190, roger, check lanyards. Uh, roger. 190 will be landing in five minutes. 190 will be on the ground in five minutes. Each member of this team of experts radiates a self-assurance that can only be acquired through experience and knowledge. This individual achievement of excellence, of quality and performance is reflected in their product, the T-38. Representing an outstanding accomplishment in the field of supersonic high-performance aircraft, the T-38 has already chalked up many enviable firsts. This was the first supersonic aircraft to ever complete all phases of flight testing without a major accident. In its role as basic trainer for the United States Air Force, the T-38 is enjoying the lowest accident rate in the history of the Air Training Command. Outstanding achievement. In 1962, the T-38, the trainer, established four new international world time-to-climb records for the 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, and 12,000 meter altitudes, surpassing the former marks held by an F-104 by as much as 16 seconds. The National Aeronautics Association officially recorded T-38 climb rates of 44,000 feet per minute or nearly 500 miles per hour straight up. United States Air Force pilot Major Walter F. Daniel illustrates the T-38's attitude during his record-breaking flights. The simultaneous beginning of a new T-38 occurs at many widely separated places. Raw materials, subcontracted parts, components and systems are routed to Northrop's California facilities where they are inspected and then integrated into a computerized system of accountability and scheduling. This streamlined system of automated operations controls is but one of Northrop's special management tools designed and dedicated to the optimization of the end product. AOC assures on schedule progression of each T-38 by coordinating the constant flow of the thousands of items required by as many separate operations to complete the long assembly and inspection process. Everything that contributes to making the airplane, every single item, each unit, all components, must be individually perfect, and when assembled, function together with unfailing reliability. Reliability and quality control are not just words at Northrop, where science continues to ensure the absolute maximum of safe and long product life. While more than 500 T-38s have departed this final assembly area to lace the skies with vapor trails, one remains behind, forever grounded. For three years, this airframe has undergone a mechanical flexing process 
representing the equivalent of 30,000 actual flight hours and 64,000 landings. The wing has been flexed approximately one and one quarter million times. This testing exceeds by four times the design life of the aircraft, which is 7,000 flying hours, covering 10 years of pilot training service, making the T-38 one of the most tested aeronautical systems in today's Air Force inventory. This thoroughness of quality and reliability is evidenced at Northrop's Palmdale facility each time a new T-38 is ready for first flight. Consistent reliability built into each T-38 makes it possible for both company and Air Force pilots to perform inspection and check out simultaneously. More times than not, the Air Force makes the acceptance on the first flight. takes off and begins its climb out. A familiar phrase is transmitted back to the monitoring radio. Airworthiness check complete. Thor Air, roger. Airworthiness check complete. The first airborne check. The beginning of a carefully laid out flight profile designed to step by step prove the functional integrity of all systems and components and environment. The first mission for all new T-38s is the trip through its basic performance envelope, where all checks are conducted and must be passed satisfactorily before acceptance can be accomplished. designated to receive the new T-38, fly at home, where its important role begins, the role for which it was designed, supersonic, high-performance... are proving to be a valuable adjunct to other flight activities. At the Air Force's Flight Test Center, Edwards Air Force Base, T-38s are used as chase aircraft in support of many varied projects. Low operational costs, coupled with high performance, make the T-38 ideally qualified for this role of a readily available supersonic chase aircraft. T-38s have been flying in the fast company of NASA's X-15s, and T-38s were selected to accompany the XB-70 on its first flight to Edwards Air Force Base. The Aerospace Research Pilot School at Edwards uses a T-38 to maintain pilot proficiency, and the astronauts at NASA's Manned Space Flight Center at Houston, Texas, are using T-38s to keep in touch with high-performance flight techniques, the requisite skill upon which space travel depends. The T-38 is proving to be a truly remarkable aircraft, a flying classroom where fledgling pilots are introduced to high-performance flight under the safest possible conditions and be at the same time a vehicle capable of satisfying the working demands of test pilots and astronauts.